The story of the on-cloud monster Hyper starts here with the original monster. This got evolved to the Monster 2. A few tweaks here and there, but not necessarily a radically different shoe. Because to me, I thought the Eclipse, this was the monster. Until of course, now we've heard about the creation of the Cloud Monster Hyper. This one here. Now this is what I want to talk to you about. On running Cloud Monster Hyper. Is it worth the price point of 210 pounds here in the UK? Let's find out. My name is Aubrey, I'm a runner and I'm good with being me. At the time of filming this, you've given me 11,115 subscribers. I'm truly grateful for each one of you. It means a lot to me that I'm being supported this way. If you're on Instagram, please catch up with me, Aubrey.running. It would be good to connect with you. How have I tested this shoe? I'm coming back from injury, so I'm not doing a heck load of miles. Um, so I've put in 32K across four runs, some reps, a long run, easy run, just to see how he copes with all those paces. On runnings, Cloud Monster Hyper, the three things you need to know. I'm gonna start with the most controversial bit, 210 pounds. This is the only factor that then gets you to decide if this is a good shoe or not. Everything else, when you look at it independently, I'm gonna argue that this is one of the best daily trainers you can get. There are a few reasons for that and we will get to that in a little bit. But that price, that price is the only thing that will make a few people question whether they should get this shoe or not. In terms of the weight, this is the Cloud Monster 2. It's listed as 300 grams in a UK size eight. I don't have the scales to weigh these currently, but this is now 265. That's a heck load lighter. I told you there are gonna be a few factors of why you should consider this shoe. I'll get to that in a little bit. In terms of the stack height, 37 and a half, 31 and a half. Why don't we just say 38 and 32, giving you a six mil drop. So now let's break down the shoe. Normal English, no jargon. I don't like names that companies use for the materials. Let's just have a chat. Starting from the top, working our way down. Let's start with the heel. Now look, the premise here is, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Not much change when you look at the Monstar 2, even the Eclipse, these daily trainers are gonna have matching features all the way through. It's the same with the heel. I'm gonna do it, put it there, and you can see, there you go, excellent padding in the collar. It feels great putting it on. There's a lot of structure at the back. You can't really push that. It's a very secure hold. I can't fault it. And look, and when you look at the back, it maintains the look that the previous monsters have. They haven't deviated from anything. So if you're familiar with the Monster or the Monster 2, nothing significant in terms of the change. Next up is the tongue. So two things to talk about here. Yes, it's a gusseted tongue. The attachment though is quite low down on the tongue. It's attached nonetheless. I always appreciate that. So very nice touch over there. In terms of the texture of the tongue, it's, it's not the most padded tongues. It does the job. Essentially what I'm looking for in the padding is where when you're tying the laces down, there's not too much pressure on the top of your foot, especially at toe off. Actually, I say two, but let me talk about the third thing I like about this tongue. The perforations at the base of the tongue, absolutely key to making the shoe breathable. That's a nice touch. It's a very good tongue, no complaints. The lacing system. This is the lacing system in the Monster 2. You see these little string things over here. I, I don't really like that at all. And it seems like they've listened because that is a bit more resilient in terms of the eyelets. I prefer that compared to, overall, I just prefer holes. Let's keep things simple. But if compared to the other one, I definitely prefer that. But in terms of the lacing system, let me tell you what I love, these laces. Let's go over here. The laces here have got these little spikes, right? Rubberized texture, um, at the end of the laces, that when you're tying down, it almost like sticks to itself. It's really hard to show you, but there is a texture at the end of these laces that when you tie them down, 
You need your ancestors, your mother-in-law, your best friend to come and help you undo these laces. It's such little detail that you have to pay attention to that almost starts to tell you maybe it is worth the price. I don't think 210 is right for a daily trainer personally, but I'm starting to notice these little fine things. <sighs> this is On Running's most expensive shoe, the Cloud Boom Echo 3. Now, I haven't seen this on the spec sheet, but I want you to look at this upper. Let me bring it here. You see this upper? Let me bring it to the top. You see this upper? You see that material? Well, it's here. There. It looks like the same materials. Oh my days, what are you doing? So wait, wait. Remember what I was telling you? This is a daily trainer, a daily trainer. It's got the same or similar upper. It's lightweight. Oh, oh, wait, wait, let me show you, let me show you. You see this here? This material in this upper, this is the first monster, right? That's similar material in the second one. And then they've gone completely the other way in giving you a more streamlined, more race day-ish, very technically engineered upper. I don't care what this thing is called, but I want you to know that the upper in the Monster Hyper is not the upper material-wise that you're used to in the Monster series or any of the on-running daily trainers. It's similar to the race day shoe, the Cloud Boom Echo 3. That, this is what I'm telling you. Before you listen to someone saying it's overly priced, please pay attention to me first. I still think it's overly priced, don't get me wrong, but I hope this review moves your opinion a little bit in understanding the premium features of this shoe. You see that there? That, you see, you, do you see it? Right, that's called P-backs, P-bar, P-backs. Like I was telling you before, I don't really care about the names of these things or the materials. I care about what they are and how they feel. Let me explain what P-Backs is. On top end race day shoes, every brand will use some sort of formulation, their version of this P-Backs midsole foam. This is a daily trainer. It's got that. Now, the thing is, as you can see, let me show you the anatomy of it here. If you look closely, it's only at the front when it gets back to here, that's where that P-Backs is. And to me, that's where I want it to be. I could care less if it's not back here. They call it the same kind of clouds formulation. It's that same material. But bringing in that P-Backs foam at the front, I told you, I, I'll keep going back to this. I don't think 210 pounds is the way but it's sticking with the midsole. There's no speedboard. Hallelujah for that. There is no speedboard in this midsole, and you feel it. Being a daily trainer, well, it's not a super trainer. It doesn't have a carbon plate or a speedboard or whatever you want to call it. That's exactly how I want it because I'm a sucker for cushioning. Listen, running is hard already as it is. Why do I wanna make it harder by wearing a shoe that doesn't provide me the cushioning? They've done that here. I love the formulation, I do. I also love how the shoe feels just generally. That's a good midsole. And bang, the outsole, love it. They've got the coverage in all the right places. I've had the Monster 1, the 2. I've got the Cloud Eclipse, as well as the Surfer 7. I've got basically, I've got all the on-running shoes. I've never had issues with the outsole. I'm not gonna start now. It looks like the same formulation. The lug system though, let me show you this. It doesn't feel like you can see it yourself. No issues whatsoever in terms of grip. No issues in terms of coverage. I love what they've done here. Who is it for and should you buy this shoe? If you're a massive on running fan, this is definitely one you should try. If you're looking for a daily trainer to rack up a lot of miles in, where pace is not the issue, but rather comfort and that performance, this will be the shoe. 
Where I find it tough to suggest or even recommend is the price point. It's 210 pounds. The people I know, the people I interact with, the people that subscribe to my channel, don't buy 210 pounds daily trainers. It makes it very tough to recommend to them to buy this shoe. However, if you loved the Monster, the Monster 2, this shoe blows all of those out of the water. This is simply the best monster and definitely one of the best daily trainers from on running. Simple as that. A lot of my community here on YouTube, followers on Instagram and the people I interact with might not be able to spend 210 pounds on a daily trainer. For those of you that can, absolutely. This shoe blows out the Monster 1-2. This is simply the best monster on running have put out. Thank you for watching. My name is Aubrey. Head to the clouds, feet on the ground.